Welcome to Maze Lico Challenge. Today's problem is maximum sum circular subarray. So given a circular array represented by A, find the maximum possible sum of non-empty subarray C. So this is very similar to the contiguous maximum contiguous subarray problem. Basically, we've given an array and we want to find the, a sub, the maximum subarray that returns to us the maximum sum. So it could be the whole thing, or it could be like just part of the array that's going to return us the max sum. Like here, it'd just be 3, because if we add anything else, it's going to actually become less than that. The difference with this question is that it's a, it's a circular array. And all that means is it's like a circular linked list where the tail actually points to the head in sort of an infinite loop. There's no end. Like once you reach the end, you could go to the head again, and it's just going to loop around. So if we're given an example like this, 5, negative 3, 5, normally the answer would be 7, right? It'd be 5, 2, 7. But here, because we could circularly go around, it'd be better to start at the end with 5, move to the head, get 10, and just end that subarray there. The only constraint would be that this subarray needs to be either, uh, it has to be less, less or equal to the length of the array itself, or the array that we're given. Yeah, so when I looked at the hint, it said, it mentioned Kadan's algorithm. And that's what I initially thought. Kadan's al algorithm is pretty simple. It's um, basically you're just going to move through the array. And it's a greedy method where you sum up the maximum current sum as you move through this array. And you do a check to see, OK, this, at this point, we're adding everything up from before. Is this point? greater than what we summed up so far because if it is it's just better to get rid of everything that we've summed so far it's just better to start at this point um, so once we check for that we store that maximum current sum and then store the maximum sum that we stuffed uh, calculated so far so let me just do that here we'll say this is called case one it's Kadan's algorithm so so that would be it for Kadan's algorithm. So that's simple. But with this problem here, where basically case one is going to just be Kadan's algorithm, but case two might start in the middle of our array and move and split across to this to the, well, it's the same array, but it's like as if it was another array, just going to continue on forward. So how would we do this? And to illustrate that, I'm going to move to the whiteboard. Let's say we had an array that looked like this, 2, 2, 2, negative 1, 10, 10. We've already discussed how we can get the maximum subarray using Kadan's algorithm. Uh, but what if it was a circular linked list, right? What if we can go from the tail to the head? And I've illustrated that by putting the array again at, at the right side here, 2, 2, 2, negative 1, 10, 10. So here, the maximum subarray is actually going to go from this point on the first to the second point. And the only condition that needs to hold is that the length that we're checking needs to be either equal to or less than the size of the length of the array. Okay, so how do we do this? Well, when we separate these into two arrays, you can imagine we need to find the maximum amount from each point that is guaranteed to reach the end. So here, what is the maximum um, sum that for this subarray, but it has to reach then. Well, what about this one? What about this one? What about this one? And all that needs to be guaranteed is that the array reaches the very end of the list for the first first array. And we can actually do that. Forget Kunun's algorithm. All we would need to do is sum up, do a cumulative sum from the rightmost point of the array and move the left to the end. And once we do that, we have a cumulative sum. We can then store the maximum amount that we've had so far uh, and use that as kind of a dynamic programming solution to indicate to us, like, what is the maximum amount uh, that you could find? What subarray can you find from this point to all the way to the right uh, as long as, like I said, it reaches all the way to the right? So the first thing we do is do a cumulative sum. So we start with 10. We add that. We say 20. 19, that's 21, 23, and 25, right? And 
that's not enough. We have to actually record the maximum amount that we could do. So let's, let's go through it again. Using this array, we can say, well, what's the max that we've stored so far? So it would be 20, 20, well, 19, well, 20 is greater than 19. So 20 here, well, 21 is greater. So 21, 23, and 25. So now we have this dynamic programming array, right? And this indicates to us from this point all the way to the end, this is the maximum amount that you can find in this subarray. So that's good. Um, all we need to do now is for each, do the same thing on the right side. And for, um, once we do like a cumulative sum for the right side, we can then just add it to the left array that we've created here, but go to the point at which the array needs to end. So I'll just illustrate that with like, in the same way, this shows us what is the maximum amount that we can find from here to here. What about from here to here? Um, from here to here. Well, it's not the maximum amount, it's the cumulative sum. But all we need to do is move through it again to find the maximum sum, right? So how do we do that? Well, ultimately we want to find the maximum amount that we could find here. Uh, from each point we can check. So for two, check not the first index, but the second, because we can, um, basically we can check like from this point here all the way to the right, what's going to be the maximum, right? And we can use this amount to say, okay, we'll add that to the amount that we've cumulatively summed so far, and that's going to be the maximum for this subarray, right? So here it would be 2 pointing to 23, just add that together, that'd be 25 here, 4 to 21, that'd also be 25. And you can check that from 2, like here, it's, it's, it, it is indeed 25, the maximum you can get. What about from here, from 6 to um, 1, that'd be 20, so that's 26, 5, 20, that's uh, 25, let's see, 15 uh, to 10, right, so 15, 10, okay, yeah, so, uh, did I indicate that right, 2, 2, 1, 21, 25, yeah, so the last one, actually, we don't need to check, right, because if, if we start from here, um, if, or if we end here, that means it's just the end of this array, so we don't, we don't count that one, so we don't actually need to calculate that, all we need to do now is just check what is, the maximum sum that we've calculated here, because each one of these points actually is calculating the max of from here to here, from here to here, from here to here, and so on and so forth. And we're gonna have to do a bunch of things, right? We'll have to loop through the number quite a few times. We'll start with creating a few, few arrays. And this one, we'll just have it as a list, and each one will be zero. And we'll also say left max store store uh, the maximums later, and we'll do have to do a right one as well afterward. Uh, let's see, ten. Okay, so the first thing we want to do a cumulative sum, and let's calculate that. We'll call it cum sum left, and we'll start with zero uh, because it's going to be cumulatively summing, and we have to move backwards from this list, right? So it'll be for i in range range of n minus 1, wait, n minus 1, um, all the way to 0. So we have to say nick 1, and we'll move, subtract like that. So cum sum left plus or equal to uh, a of i, like that. And then what? We just store the sum in our left sum like this. So I, oops, um, come sum left. So there, uh, but that's not enough. We have to go one more time, but this time store the max of Yeah, so we have to move through this and basically store the max as we're iterating down leftwards through the left sum. So let's see. Uh, 
I think I guess it would be cur max. So we'll store another thing. We'll say cur max left. We'll make that equal to. Uh, technically, it, it might not be zero. Uh, so we'll have to say like that, and then we'll say cur max left uh, equals the max of cur max left and the left sum um, that we're checking right now, right? So once we calculate that, then we'll just make that equal to, oops, not the sum, but the max. So great. Now we have our left max DP array, but we're not finished. We have to move now uh, to create the the right sum, and same way, it's just in range of n this time, and we'll do the same thing. This time we'll call it a cursum right, and we'll say, all right, um, cursum right plus or equal to a i, and just store that in what's called right sum i equals oops, equals cur sum right okay so let's see here uh, cur sum left maximum yep all right so finally finally what what do we need to do well like i said we need to um, move through the right again, but this time we're not, we're going to do it only to um, n minus one, right? Because we don't want need to calculate the last one. And we'll just store the maximum sum that we calculate. We'll call it max sum two. And the same way we'll initialize it to a negative infinite number. So through here we'll say for i in range of n minus one, We'll say, okay, max sum two. Um, what, that's not right. We'll have, to, we'll have to have a current max two here. Current max two. We'll say, all right, current max two is equal to, uh, let's see, current max two is equal to the right sum i plus um, left max i plus one. I believe that's correct. Uh, well, well, I guess we'll check later. And all we need to do is store max between these two. So cool. So now we've done both cases. Case one, case two, we've calculated two max sums and we just need to return whatever is the max between these. So max sum and max sum two. All the comes sum right. So some right, some right. Okay, let's try that again. Okay, so let me submit that. Okay, so it did get accepted. So this is um, the straightforward approach, straightforward as they say, but I think hopefully I explained it decently well. I did see one other solution that was magical. Um, basically, they calculated both the max uh, sum as well as the min sum. And doing that, you're able to actually subtract the total count, the total sum of the array with the min sum to calculate uh, what would actually be the maximum for for a case like this. But I, I didn't want to go through it because it was really hard for me to understand it and explain. Like I can code it, but it seemed like magic how it worked. I'm sure there's some sort of mathematical uh, reason for it, but uh, it was hard for me to like intuitively get it. So I just went with this solution because it made sense to me. Um, all right, well, thank you.